Good morning. Thank you for joining us this Christmas day. Um, I understand we don't quite have enough bulletins, so I will try to remember to read out page numbers as we go along. We begin our service on page 355 of your Book of Common Prayer. That's the red book in the pew in front of you, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song of praise will be hymn number 99. Uh, That will be found in the blue book in the pew in front of you. Pray. O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples, 
the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord. The response is Psalm 7. We'll read it responsively by the whole verse. The psalm may be found on page 726 of your Book of Common Prayer. Page 726. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. A reading from Paul's letter to Titus. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to a city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we um, got our Christmas present from our daughter early this year. Uh, Our daughter lives in Germany, so it it generally is not a material gift uh, that we got, uh, that we get from her. Um, And this year, uh, it was something kind of special, I think. And... At the risk of showing my age one way or the other, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It was a video of um, John Denver and the Muppets doing the 12 Days of Christmas. It doesn't seem like a very valuable gift, but um, oftentimes the most valuable gifts are uh, the ones that have no material worth. Many faiths have traditional times of the year when people exchange gifts. And during Christmas, we Christians have a tradition of recognizing those that we love with gifts. And we have a Christmas carol, the 12 days of Christmas, that suggested gifts from days of yore, from a partridge in a pear tree to a drum line. And it suggested that the gifts my true love gave to me are a secret catechism dating from the time when practicing Roman Catholics in Great Britain, uh, the the practice was illegal, and so they had this secret catechism that 
they shared with one another. And I don't know that I really buy into that because the truth is that 99.44% of our DNA, uh, us Anglicans and the Roman Catholics, it's, it's really the same. So I don't know that really there was a secret to the catechism, if, if it was a catechism. Uh, but I thought it would be fun uh, this morning to look at the gifts and, and um, talk about what the speculation of what they actually meant were. So uh, let's, let's go through the list. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. Um, the partridge in a pear tree signifies Christ because a partridge will sacrifice herself for her young. And in fact, um, a partridge will pull out the feathers from her breast to line her nest for the comfort of her children. For the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two, two turtle doves. Uh, and the two turtle, dove, two turtle doves, two turtle doves uh, represent the Old and the New Testament of the Bible. And I think it's, in, it's significant for us that the Christ comes before the Word. The Christ comes before Scripture. And I think that is important because the fact of Jesus is even more important than the telling of it. And next we have three French hens. I don't know why they're French. Uh, but there you are. <clears throat> the three French hens represent faith, hope, and charity. The Christian virtues Paul espouses in his first letter to the Corinthians. And then we have four for calling birds. Uh, they represent the four gospels and the four gospelers who call back and forth to one another and to us. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, those are those who call to us and tell us stories of who we are throughout history. And then we have, and you have to, you have to think about it in uh, the voice of Miss Piggy. Next is the five golden rings. And I can hear Miss Piggy saying it. Uh, the five golden rings represent the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And these books contain some of the oldest stories that the three major monotheistic religions share, as well as one of the first codes of law. And these five books explain how we came to be in creation and how God wishes for us to live while we're here. And the, the sixth item is six... Geese laying, six geese laying. When when I was a school chaplain before I came back to Las Cruces, uh, one of our kindergarten classes raised baby chicks. Uh, they had eggs uh, that were fertilized, and and they watched the ha eggs hatch, and they got to they got to see the miracle of birth. And uh, for us adults who watched the kids watching the birds and the eggs, we got to see the miracle and the wonder of new life dawning in their eyes. And that reminds us of not only our own birth, but our rebirth in baptism. The seven swans of swimming represent the seven sacraments. Um, here's your, your Anglican um, trivia lesson. Who can name one of the seven sacraments? Baptism, Eucharist, that's two. Uh, marriage, confession, that's a good one. 
uh, we, don't, we don't really practice that very often in the Episcopal Church, do we? Um, holy orders and unction. Is that all of them? I think that's all of them. Baptism, Eucharist, confirmation, reconciliation, anointing of the sick or unction, marriage and holy orders. <clears throat> Eight, anybody remember? Eight maids of milking. Man, we're, we're really getting into the weeds here, aren't we? Um, PNC Bank every year produces a price list of all of the gifts on Christmas. And it's called the Christmas price list. And they calculate the cost of each item in the, in the Christmas carol. And they suggest that the cost of paying eight milkmaids for an hour would be $58 at $7.25 an hour. And I think it's fitting that the eight maids of milking represent Matthew's Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And I encourage you, if you're curious, to look up the list and see what the rest of the items cost individually. And at the end, I'll, I'll give you the grand total. Because of COVID, this is the first year since uh, 2019 that we have the remainder of the song because all of the rest require groups of people. And apparently milkmaid, being a milkmaid is a solitary endeavor um, because that was included last year. Uh, but for the rest, for the 10 lords leaping and 11 pipers piping and 12 drummers drumming, this is the first year uh, since uh, 2019 that we have the cost of that. But they all represent something according to tradition. The nine ladies dancing represent the nine fruits of the Spirit from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Paul writes, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The ten lords of leaping represent the ten commandments. And the eleven pipers piping represent the eleven faithful apostles. And finally, the twelve drummers drumming, which if you come to St. James next week, we'll talk about. It's going to be a page turner. It represents the 12 points of doctrine in the Apostles' Creed. It's going to be a page turner. But I suspect that it's pretty infrequent that a singer of the carol actually gets through to the end of the 12 days of Christmas. John Denver and the Muppets did it. But most commercial editions or spoofs today, they kind of peter out about the sixth day, it seems. And if the supposed secret meanings are valid, then I expect it's probably good that they didn't count down from 12, or this wouldn't be the popular Christmas carol that it is. But in the 12 days between Christmas today and the Epiphany, which happens on what day? January 
fifth? Is it the sixth? Yep, that's right. Twelfth night is the fifth. Um, and uh, the day of the epiphany is, is the sixth. That's right. Um, between today and the epiphany, I think it's a good thing for us to dwell on gifts and gift giving and receiving gifts. Everything that the romantic gifts mention and everything that the possible catechism mentions, they are gifts. They are gifts for us. We have the gifts of teachings from Scripture that, if nothing else, are good ideas of how we can get along with one another. And we have the gifts of doctrine handed down for centuries. And ultimately, in the song and in our tradition, we have the gift of God himself, the partridge in the pear tree, which we receive every day of the song. God came to us in the person of Jesus to live and die with us, to show us a better way to live while we're here and to announce God's plan of salvation to us. So, Merry Christmas. I hope your holiday, all 12 days from Christmas morning to the Epiphany, are merry and bright. And even if the traditional Christmas gifts are out of your budget this year, at a grand total for all the gifts this year, which comes to $46,729.86, an increase of 2.7% over last year. Remember, the giving is the point rather than the value of the gift. But even if 10 Lords of Leaping didn't visit you or, spoiler alert, you didn't receive any frankincense or myrrh this year, I hope the gifts you did receive warmed your heart and reminded you that the giver loves you. And by extension, that God loves you too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people will be form six found on page 392 of your book of common prayer and page 11 in your bulletin in peace we pray to you lord god for all people in their daily life and work For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the world, justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, for Michael Hun, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for the sick and suffering, especially Shauna and family, Lisa, Martha and Sylvia, Kirk, Oliver, Nathaniel, Amy, Abe, Chrissy, DJ and Diana, Judy, Samantha, Lisa and Veronica, Gordon and Martha, Lee, Wayne and Dana. Are there others? We pray for the Anglican Communion, especially the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. We pray for the Diocese of the Rio Grande, especially women's ministry, Daughters of the King, and the Ministry of Diocesan Canons. We pray for our parish, especially for the renewal of our spiritual life together and for all forms of renewal that bring people closer to Christ. We pray for those serving in our armed forces, especially Will Buntain, Kurt Campos, Jonathan Courtney, Daniel Fuller, Mary Samantha Katzenberger, Trevor Rankin, and Zachary Tierney. We pray for our missionaries, especially Anna Reza and Mike Wallens, Perry and Samra Mansfield, Sean Martin, the Mustard Seed Babies Home in Uganda. If you wish, you may add other petitions out loud or silently. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And if you'd like, you may add your own thanksgivings out loud or silently. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, especially Hugh Floyd, LaVon Bryant, Gertrude, William, Ella, and Roger McDaniel, Tom Mackin, Ruth Floyd, Red and Lil Webster, William H. and Betty B. Bennett, Ella Moore, Joseph, Florence, Juliet and Alexander de la Richelieu. Are there others? That they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. 
You may also add your own petitions at this time if you wish. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Christmas Day. Um, today we have a gathering of both the congregations of St. Andrews and St. James from here in Las Cruces. We thank you all for coming together and thank you, John, for uh, preaching for us today. Um, basic announcement is there is a green sheet at the back of the church. If you want to know what's going on the next two weeks, that's where to look. Um, offices are closed this week, so different services will be, well, services will be either canceled or happening at different times. Uh, and I believe John said that his main uh, announcement was that what he wants for Christmas is for people to get their flu and COVID vaccinations because he's been recovering from that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, um, since November, I've had both COVID and the flu. Uh, I even got a doctor's note for, for the flu. Um, it, was, it was that good. Um, I should not be... Um, contagious any longer so and I've washed my hands as well uh, but yes um, my Christmas wish uh, this year is that uh, if you haven't um, had your uh, annual vaccinations that you get your annual vac vaccinations this year all right. thank you all right again I refer you to the green sheet that the ushers have at the back of the auditorium for things happening here at st. Andrews and now Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Our service continues with Eucharist Prayer A, which begins on page 361 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. 
and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
please join me in our post-communion prayer found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. <coughs> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent the Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent the angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you all forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.